What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills. So in today's video, as you can see, I'm back at camp because I've decided I want to revamp it a bit. It's been the same pretty much since I built it, which was what, eight months ago, eight, ten months ago maybe, something like that, I can't even remember. It's a bit weather worn now, things are starting to slip, things aren't as secure as they once were, so I think it's time to uh, to give it a revamp. And if I have time, once I've finished that, I'm also going to practice some, uh, some elementary bushcraft skills as well. I hope you enjoy. Let's go. Alright guys, so as I said, I haven't really changed the camp much since I first built it, which was quite a long time ago, what, like eight, ten months, something like that? I can't even remember. Uh, and it's in dire need of some repairs. So for example, some of my supports here, as you can see, have just snapped, so I need to get those replaced. Uh, there's an awful lot of tarp that's just folded under the back here that's kind of wasted, um, so I want to do something with that. I want to move my bed further back. I keep saying I'm going to do that, I've said that for however long the camp's been up, I keep saying I'm going to move my bed and I haven't done it, but today I am going to. 100% and move the bed back uh, and what I actually want to do is create kind of a little overhang at the top so I don't have to keep putting up my big tarp over the top if it rains um, I don't know if you guys have watched previous videos when I've done that but what tends to happen is when I have a fire the smoke from the fire rises up hits that tarp and comes straight back into my face which I want to avoid um, so that is the plan for today uh, I've got all day it's not supposed to rain but it, to be fair it's is England it does look a little bit overcast so we'll see um, but before I do any of that, I need to get my tools nice and sharp because I haven't sharpened them for a little while. So I'm going to get my chair out, um, get my sharpening uh, stone out and, uh, and get that done really quickly. And then, as I say, we'll crack on with getting this stuff sorted. Alright, today I brought out my TBS bore, which was one of the first bushcraft knives I used, um, but unfortunately I've kind of neglected it a little bit, so it's kind of blunt at the moment. So I'll need to get a good uh, good edge on it, uh, and to do that I'm just going to use a, uh, an oil stone that I bought um, just off the internet. Uh, I've got some uh, rapeseed oil in there, I've got a little leather strop with a, uh, a polishing compound on it, and I've just got some cloths as well. So because it is quite dull, I think I'm going to use both sides of my sharpening stone. Uh, sharpening knives is something that I have struggled with before. I've never been able to get the right technique. You know, I've watched hundreds of videos of, uh, of different, you know, uh, sharpening techniques, uh, and the majority of the ones that I saw, I found were going like you got to do eight strokes one way, and then eight strokes the other way, and then eight strokes, and then eight strokes, and then one stroke, and then one stroke, and I just I couldn't figure out quite how to get a, uh, a sharp edge on it. Uh, but recently. Uh, actually, last weekend I did a, uh, a level two bushcraft instructors course with a company called Wild Bushcraft Company, who are amazing. I learned so much; uh, it's absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to go back and do the assessment. Um, if anybody's interested in, in learning this kind of stuff and actually learning how to teach it to other people, which is what the course I did was about, um, they're absolutely amazing, and I would highly recommend you go check them out. I'll leave a link to them in, in the description down below. Um, but they showed me a, a sharpening method which made so much more sense and was so so easy when I practiced it there. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to recreate it today uh, and get my, uh, my bore knife uh, nice and sharp. So it's a really, really simple method. All I'm gonna do is put a bit of oil on my stone. As I said, I'm gonna use both grits. Um, and what they said to do was rather than doing, like counting the number of strokes you're doing, doing eight one way and then eight the other way, is actually doing one side of the knife until you have a bevel on it. Um, and what I mean by that is each, as you may know, a knife, um, the blade side of it comes to a, comes to a point, right? Uh, and when you're sharpening a knife, what you're actually doing is taking bits of metal off. Um, and they're saying to do it on one side until what happens is one edge of the blade kind of goes up a little bit and almost bends over because of your, as I say, you're removing bits of metal. So it ends up looking a little bit like that. Uh, and then what you need to do is run your finger down the blade until you can feel that excess bit over the top. So it kind of feels like you're hitting a little bump uh, all the way down the edge of the blade. Once you've got that down one side, turn it over, do the same thing until you feel the point go on the other side. And then you strop it until on just a piece of leather, you don't even need the, the, the polishing compound to be fair. 
just strop it on a piece of leather until that bevel goes away completely on both sides and then it should in theory be nice and sharp so i'm going to try that today uh, on my tbs bore and see how we get on Okay, I can feel I've got that burr along the entire blade, which is awesome. Uh, so that means I can now swap over and do the other side. So all I'm gonna do is exactly the same technique, but instead of doing it that way, I'm just gonna swap the blade over so the other side is showing and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Because this is a Scandinavian grind, um, it actually makes the sharpening technique a little bit easier to get the right angle. All I do is put the knife flat on the stone and then rock it a little bit to coincide with this angle here. Hopefully you can see that there's a kind of a line there where the, uh, the knife, I don't know if you can see that, but the knife starts to come in. So all I do, flat on the stone, tip, and then off we go. Fantastic, so now I've got the bevel on the other little burr thing on the second side of the blade. All I'm gonna do now is turn over my sharpening stone, turn over the blade again, do exactly the same process. And once I've got a burr on both sides again, I'll then get to stropping. There we have it, a nice sharp knife. Sharp knives really, really important for safety more than anything else. If you're using a blunt knife, you end up trying to put far more pressure into your cuts and things can go really badly wrong. So a sharp knife is really, really important. And I always did like my TBS bore. I just kind of fell out of love with it a little bit when I couldn't get it sharp again, which is obviously just my poor sharpening technique now perhaps i shall fall back in love with it we shall see anyway you find i find myself getting stuck in a meditative thing and just doing it over and over and over again uh but i think it's good yeah happy with that okay so i'm just going to clean the oil off my knife and then we're going to crack on with actually doing some work Well, sitting around and sharpening my TBS or oh, it's maybe a little bit cold, so I think it's time I got on and did some real work. Um, so as you can see, uh, there's various bits here that need replacing, like my second ridge bolt that was supposed to be higher up to attach my second tile to. It's all slopping and flipping around now. Um, and as I said, I wanted to move the tarp, move the bed. So in order to make all of that easier, I think the first thing to do um, is take that ridge pole down and then take all of this stuff off the back. Um, I'm going to keep it because I actually like the way it makes my shelter look. I'm just going to pull it to one side uh, and then once I'm set up again, I'm going to have to put it all back on. I don't know how complicated this is going to be in terms of moving the tarp. We may not get it finished today. We'll see. I should have plenty of time. I mean, as I say, I've got all day, so we'll just play and see how we get on. Right. this was all an old uh, cypress tree or actually a few different cypress trees that were taken down um, that were on this property and I uh, commandeered a lot of it to make my shelter look a bit cooler. This, because I struggled to take it down, uh, I think it's going to be a really useful resource. 
so I'm going to keep this. Not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm sure it'll come in handy. All right, so I've taken off all the old cypresses as you can see and all my support beams that were there. I've loosened up the tarp. What I'm going to do now is take the tarp pretty much off or at least pull it back to the other side so I can move my bed back to where I want it. Uh, and then we can reposition the tarp once that's done. That makes the most sense to me. The way I'm building the bed is exactly the same as I did last time. Two big logs um, on either end, and then one to go across, and I then lay my cross poles, uh, actual bed poles if you like, across. So nothing fancy, uh, but it does the job and it works well. And then I'm going to put some stakes back in to keep the whole thing together. livable. All right, so now that the bed is in theory in place, or at least initially in place, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put the tar um, at the bottom here anyway, at the level that I want it, so I get all of the excess to, uh, to then make my overhang. So I'm going to find a way to connect it to this. Now what I think I'm going to do is it makes sense to follow the two sort of side pole things that I've put up. Uh, so to then pin the tarp as close to this as I can so that it follows the same angle. So what I think I might do is carve some pegs. Um, just, yeah, just carve some simple pegs, pop them through the loops here and just smash them into the ground. Would it make sense to put some paracord around the loops and then do it that way? Let's not use paracord if we don't have to. Let's just make some pegs. We'll smash them through these holes here, through the loops, and then we'll we'll see how we get on. Okay. So yeah, I've just pulled all this tight try to put up some makeshift stoppers uh, and I'm going to put the weight back on the other side um, and then hopefully that will kill the wind off and uh, make my life a little bit easier to, as I say, then pull this out and then all I have to do is find a way to keep it out and taut. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So I'm putting the stuff back on the back. Alright, so as you can see, I've recovered the back. I basically just did the same as uh, the last time I did this in a previous video. So if you're wondering how I did it, because I haven't shown it, just go back and watch it. Um, all I've done is put some poles on, just leaning against the, uh, the ridge pole, and then I've just shoved all of the cypress duff, essentially, against those poles to, uh, to try and cover up the top. Not a brilliant job by any means. I know there's loads of gaps in it, but it's good enough for the sake of today. Um, right, so that's the back done. So the next thing to do is try and figure out how I'm going to create this overhang. Um, this side should be fairly easy because I can just tie it out to this silver birch that's here. This side I need to have a little think about. I do have some materials so I could make like a tripod or something. I just don't know if it'll be high enough 
if I can make like a, I don't know, some kind of triangle bracket out from, out from the main ridge pole or tree. I don't know, let's have a think. The old top line hitch. Two on the inside, one on the outside. Don't know what I'm talking about. Go watch Joe Robin it. Two on the inside, one on the outside. The question is, how do we get the front bit to just stay out here? tripod and put it here to pull this bit out. But do I really want that really want a pole in front of the fire? Because at the moment when I make this side tall because of the weight on the back this bit here is still flapping about. Like even if I pull it out at an angle See what I mean? Unless, 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 unless. I mean, what I could potentially do is just run a ridge line from this tree over here coming straight across to that big tree it would mean that there's a line guy line there which would be a bit of a pain I don't really want that either hmm. Hmm. decisions decisions because this give me a nice nice little bit of cover Yeah, it gives me a nice amount of cover without impacting the fire too much. I can just about stand up underneath it. Hmm. Suppose I could tie a bit of paracord from here to my fire reflector. That wouldn't be too bad, although there is a risk that it, the cord would catch on fire. Hmm. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I should just try something rather than just thinking about it. I don't know if you guys can see, but I've run a piece of paracord from the tarp down here. I've just put a ridge line, um, a tarp line hitch here, and it's connected to my um, fire reflector, which isn't terrible. Although the paracord's not particularly great, uh, it's not terrible. Best. It's not. It's not bad. And it does give me rain cover. It is nice and tight. It can go anywhere.
All right, anyway, so this is, this is option number one. What I'm going to try is I'm going to try running a, a ridge line from that tree there all the way across the front of it to the bigger tree there and attach it through all three loops. Now, I don't know if I have a long enough piece of paragord. I don't think I do, so I'm going to have to put some together. Yeah, let's try that and see what it looks like. And then if we don't like it, we can always revert back to this system. All right, so here we have system number two, which I do prefer, aesthetically at least anyway. The ridge line that I've put up is high enough that when I come into camp, uh, it shouldn't take my head off. Um, that means in the dark as well, I won't, uh, I won't risk clipping my noggin. The only thing with it, as you can see, is it's not quite tight enough. I don't quite have the right angle to get this out as much as I would like. Having said that, I mean, the wind is pushing it up at the moment, and when it rains, in theory, I would drag it down, so, it's still, so it still might work. So, of the two, that I can think of at least anyway, I think I prefer this one, so I'm going to leave it like this for now. If, um, if any of you guys, by the way, have any ideas about how I can create an overhang, um, you know, please, please, please let me know. Um, without running a ridge line all the way across or without a line running down, if you know a way to get this middle bit nice and tight, you know, please, please, please do tell me. It may be that it's because of the way that I put the back up, I, I don't know. But yeah, any, any advice, please tell me in the comments down below. That would be, be amazing. Yeah. Not great, but not terrible. Okay, so now that the um, overhang is as it's going to be for a little bit, uh, I want to make sure that my bed's in the right place. So let's get this flask pole on. It's a bit of a jigsaw getting these poles on. Now this at the moment does look like it's going to be a little close to my face, so I may have moved the bed back too much. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, look at this, I can't even get in. Damn. So I do need to pull my bed back this way a little bit. I mean, it's not terrible. I can fit in, but I don't particularly want this this close to my face. As you can see, I'm still touching it. So yeah, I do need to come over a little bit. A little bit more, or I increase the angle of these bring the whole thing down a bit. Hmm. Can I be bothered to do that? Uh, in a word, no, but you're shocked by that. I do like the amount of extra cover I have here now though, so that is good. So maybe if I just pull the bed back a little bit, yeah. Oh, oh. Definitely need to move cover with the overhang yeah nice I need to rearrange these because at the moment I've got one going up into my back which is uh, really fun so I need to do that yeah it's like a jigsaw puzzle trying to get these in the right way around I suppose the other option is I could chisel them but again effort so yeah just need to get those in the right place um, and knock them in, unless, because I've never slept this way. I've never slept this way. Hmm. No, don't like this way. I like my head down. Alright guys, well I think we're going to leave it there for today. I'm quite pleased with uh, 
the progress that we've made. I feel like we got uh, quite a lot done. Uh, took the whole of the back off, redid it all, pulled the tarp up, created the little overhang, moved the bed so I've <coughs> excuse me, moved the bed so I've got a bit more shelter when I'm in here. Uh, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, next time we're out, I'm going to be practicing uh, some more uh, elementary bushcraft kind of skills. Uh, as I mentioned, I did the uh, the bushcraft level two instructors course with uh, Wild Bushcraft Company, uh, and I have an assessment uh, with them in a few weeks. I have to go back, uh, demonstrate what I've been, um, what I've learned, so demonstrate that I'm able to do certain skills, um, and then in the afternoon, uh, run a fire lighting session and a knife skill session for some people that I've never met before I actually teach them how to uh, how to do some of this stuff so I'm really really looking forward to that and I really really want to ensure that um, I can do <laughs> what it is that I'm supposed to be teaching people so next time we're out as I say I'm going to be practicing some of the stuff uh, that I'm going to need to be able to do so things like being able to make feather sticks which for anyone that has watched my channel before and has seen that video knows that they are the bane of my existence and I really, really struggle with them, so I'm gonna to have to spend a lot of time um, trying to get that down. Uh, I'll have a go at the bow drill, um, which we did when I, on the course itself, and I, I managed to, to do. I was successful uh, getting an ember the first time I did it, so I was really, really proud of that. Um, so we will have a go at that. I need to find some nice little pieces of wood to, know, to be able to try that. Um, so yeah, so nice skills, so feather sticks, I'm gonna make some tent pegs going to try the bow drill um, and a few other bits and pieces that I can uh, that I'll think of at some other point in time so anyway so thank you very very much for watching this guys I really really hope you enjoyed it um, as always you know if you're new here please make sure you hit subscribe hit the bell to stay notified of whenever I put a new video up um, and I will see you very very soon take care guys thank you very much oh yeah I meant to say actually um, on the course I met a really cool guy called Sean um, who has his own YouTube channel it's called Northern Limits bushcraft and survival skills I think Northern Limits bushcraft and survival uh, on YouTube um, go check him out he's a really really good guy um, we got on really really well during the course and he uh, he certainly knows his stuff so uh, make sure you check him out on YouTube uh, and give him a follow on Instagram as well I'm sure he'd appreciate it cheers guys